This is Ben McClintock, and this is the Thursday segment of the Liberty Lineup radio show of The Naked Truth, where we think right and wrong, not right and left. We're on K-Talk Radio, AM 630, k-talk.com. And we like to thank our sponsor, Patriot Mobile. Our, our sponsor is Patriot Mobile, not George Soros. The cell phone service for conservatives. So go to patriotmobile.com. And we've got another thing that we've got to talk to you about. If my sp- if my sponsor, if my sugar daddy was George Soros, <laughs> I'd be driving a different pickup truck, and I'd have a lot more money to spend at PrepperCon this year. <laughs> You need to you need to realize the day of preparation is coming to an end. It uh, people in only humans are so dumb not to prepare. <laughs> I, I, I meet guys at work all the time. They call me crazy. You probably do too if you listen to K Talk. You're, you're you're not the normal one in the workplace. You have food storage. You have ammunition. You have antibiotics. You've taken a suture class. You 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 know how to camp. You know how to cook. You know how to make soap and clean and clean the latrine, and you will be much better off than your poor neighbors who will come crying, asking you for the food storage you don't like. And we all have some of that, I think. I'm not as picky, so my relatives give me the food storage they know they're not going to eat. They'd have to be very hungry to eat some of this stuff. My wife likes the lentils. I hate the lentils. Okay, there you go. (laughs) Red or green, I don't know. It's all the same. But at PrepperCon, you're going to... You're going to... There's access to training, education, self-defense, survival. You will will be more comfortable if you are prepared, and you will not fear. We've been told that. There's hands-on classes, celebrity speakers. It's a weekend you're not going to want to miss on April 15th and 16th at the Southtown Expo Center in Sandy. Get your tickets now. You will be a blessing to your family and maybe some of your mooch neighbors if you are prepared. Go to PrepperCon. I'll be there. Awesome. Speaking of families, we've got Chris Kimball from our from our mom's show. That you are the uh, the last line of defense for the family, right? Chris. Oh wait, hold on. Wait, um, the on. last. Oh, sorry about that. Line. I need to learn how to work the board. Yeah. Well, hey, it's great to be on your show, Dan, and thank you for um, letting me. You know join in for the conversation for a few minutes, but really the, the family unit is the very last segment of liberty um, for individual um, protection. You know, you, you have yourself as an individual, but then you have that core family unit in that local community, and so that's where we come into play. We are the defenders of the home front, the, what you would call the secretaries of defense for your family and local communities. Awesome, and you guys... Tell everybody what day you're on the Liberty Lined Up, 10 to noon. Yeah, we are on Wednesdays. Every Wednesday, we're kind of the middle of the week, 10 till 12. And uh, yesterday, we had um, Rod Meldrum talking about the Firm Expo coming up, where there's a huge amount of, in fact, uh, uh, LaVoy's daughter is going to be speaking there next weekend, Thursday night. Friday night and Saturday night. Defending um, Utah is going to have a table there. Hope everybody come to, comes to visit us. Yes, yeah, so we want everyone to, to uh, come out and and visit Defending Utah as well as listen to um, Tara's story about what happened to her father. Yeah. But in April, what I wanted uh, our listeners to know is um, with Liberty Moms, a lot of time we have to multitask. And so I'm actually a state delegate. And so we are going to have on, um, during the month of April, the first three weeks, the candidates that are running for governor and for treasurer. And we will have them on the air each and every week. Um, well, not they won't be on every single week, but they'll each have um, a 45-minute segment of time to be on the air to talk about their campaign and take questions from callers. And uh, we've got everybody firmed up, ready to go, except for Governor Herbert. And we're waiting on his staff to decide whether or not he's got the time to do this. So we've reached out to him. Has and the time we're to just stoop down to talk to the little people. Waiting, 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 <laughs> waiting, yes. Maybe so you have more hope. Maybe you have yeah. more hope in the man than I do, Chris. Well, I've noticed that now that, um, they've, that he signed into law, SB 54, uh, a couple of the delegates down in southern Utah have 
decided that they become flyby counties for the governor. Right. That he doesn't even bother to go down there. They don't hear from him. Hmm. Um, he's just focusing on the Wasatch Front from what they're saying. They used to see him when he had to really reach out and talk to the delegates. But now Amazing. that you know, now that these elected officials can just hire some teenagers to run out and get signatures, they just have buffered themselves. You know. Well, he's a made man. He doesn't need you guys anymore. <laughs> well, and here's what I thought was really interesting. I, I'm a candidate myself. I, I filed to run against um, Carol Moss in District 37, and so I'm kind of involved in watching to see what the candidates have to do, you know, when you're running for office. So I'm, yeah. I'm a candidate just like Governor Herbert. That's in Holiday, it, right? Huh? Holiday, Murray area is my district. So it's interesting that I have to have my um, disclosure form on the the state website and the lieutenant governors and governor herberts was there and senator mike lees was there for a few days and i didn't know i needed to take a screenshot of it because i went back to refer to it to get contact information for the governor and it's gone wow it's been removed and i thought well if he gets to have his off and senator lee gets to have their disclosure statements can't why do we have to have ours online I mean, shouldn't all candidates be treated the same? You would think so. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. I'm, so I'm some pigs are, equal, are, more, are more equal than others, though, you know. Yeah, I know. I don't know why that ends up being. It's usually the incumbents that, you know, seem to be have more than, you know. So I, I do plan <laughs> to reach out to the lieutenant governor's office and ask a question about why their forms are not online and the rest of us have to be online. When I you think do we all that, need to be treated the same. Chris, will, when, will you record that phone conversation, please? Sure. Call him uh, and, and record Report it. on that. So record we can it. Do not tell him you're recording it either. <laughs> well, in, so in Utah, you don't want to break any laws. In Utah, we will let listeners know that as long as one of the parties on the phone call know that it's being recorded, it's legal to record phone calls. We don't want so, to break any laws on that. That's kind of a is weird that law. is that how that works? It so is, yeah, as, in Utah. So as long as oh, okay. the, so, so as long as the police know they're recording you, it's okay if they're on the phone call. So if if it's like if it's just as a side tangent here, if we're talking to each other mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. third person not on the phone call is recording, that's illegal. Mm. It would have to be one of us too. Oh, I see. Oh, interesting. On the call recording yeah. it. So yeah. So anyway, I'm just kind of curious because see, once you become a candidate, then you really start to watch uh, everything that ha that uh, why, I, as a candidate, have sorry, to do. Sorry, I got a little excited. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Mark Shirtliff might probably go into prison. It might because, be. Because Daryl McBride the was shop. recording the phone call. He knew it. Mark didn't know it. Shame, shame. <laughs> so as you're running for office, I know as the uh, the Liberty Moms, you, you have your show every Wednesday. But since you are a candidate, let's give you an opportunity to talk about why you're running for, for office. What's... Is there a, do you like the current uh, person in there now, and you just wanted to make sure that well, they have some opposition, or what's going on there? You no, know, there's actually quite a few, you know, reasons that kind of led to this, which is really interesting. She, um, she is an incumbent that has been there for, I would call her a career uh, politician. Very long she has time. had the seat for 16 years. That's eight election cycles. So I think it's time to get some fresh ideas, a different perspective, um, and uh, maybe to um, loosen some of the, the, you know, entrenched connections she's been uh, that's been made, you know, with her sitting there for so long. So, Sixteen um, years in the I state legislature. That's wow. That's a long time. That's a, that's eight election cycles. So that's somebody who has been able to go to eight different campaigns and been able to win. And I don't know I, all the. History the races who she's run against. I know of one candidate in the, in the most recent time. But um, she has um, disregarded parental rights um, by running deals. Um, she totally supports Common Core, which is the nationalization of our education system here in Utah and embracing the Obama's um, administration of what education should look like from um, the national level, you know, total control. She's totally been supportive of that. She is a former teacher herself, and so I don't know if it's because she's so far removed from the classroom, but, you know, teachers are leaving in droves. They, I, in, even in my caucus, there was a teacher that said, oh, she uh, has no interest in being a test administrator, because that's what teachers are becoming, are test administrators. 
And so uh, I don't like the way teachers have been treated um, because of these changes. There's been a lot of bullying and scare tactics. They're afraid for their jobs. I, um, there's a lot of things in that regard, but she, she's not been very good. She is good about the CONCON. I do have to give her some kudos. She always votes against the CONCON. And so I have to, um, I, I'm great with her on that. We probably do it for different reasons, but <laughs> <laughs> support it for different reasons. And uh, I'm trying to think that she's been supportive of tax increases and, you know, um, I, there's other things that I need to look at. But the big thing for me would be the education and how um, even the sex education, comprehensive sex education bill that came through, she tried really hard to, to keep that bill alive. Wow. Now, and, and we know here in Utah we have our own laboratory because we have four districts that do abstinence only uh-huh. and the rest do abstinence based sex education. Right. And we have the lowest STDs, teen pregnancies, when we in that four district area. With and our I'm teenagers. sure it has everything to do with the government schools and not the Sunday school. I mean, right. school always inspired my generation in California to uh, do what's right. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but you're saying that the uh, the more moral based education actually leads to less STDs, correct? Exactly. Well, and and people have an, uh, this idea that an abstinence based education means nothing's taught. Right. There's nothing. You're not teaching anything. It's that's further from the truth. They are actually are taught healthy boundaries and relationships. They're taught what causes STDs. You know, there's this idea that, oh, they never learn about STDs. Of course they do. They're taught about STDs and what causes, what, what is the behavior that causes these STDs. Not abstinence. And, <laughs> right. And, and, and so this idea that, you know, more education is needed, again, that is a federal mandate that's coming from, um, the you know, Washington, D.C. I mean... Exactly. And it's there to sexualize their children. It's, it's ridiculous because the, the statistics show that when children are taught to wait until marriage to have sex, that they, um, uh, they, end, up, uh, they end up having, they don't live in poverty. Ninety-five percent of them will not live in poverty if they wait, if they just wait until marriage, oh, imagine you know, that. For, for that inner interaction sexually. And, you know, obviously wait till have children till after you're married, 95% of the individuals will never be in poverty. So there is your own solution to the pro- poverty situation. Because right now our government, you know, gives you incentives to have children out of wedlock. Right. So, but, so if they teach abstinence, how is Planned Parenthood going to make any money killing the teenager's baby? I know. You know, that's the thing. You know, you've got Planned Parenthood that... You're hurting is, the economy, you know, Chris. I mean, 90... <laughs> what is it? 90% of their income comes from... Uh, abortion, and so if we are teaching children to wait until marriage, you don't need Planned Parenthood anymore because they don't offer mammograms. They don't offer complete women's services, right. which they can get in other clinics, you know, for free. You know, but yeah, well, it ain't for we, free. Nothing's for free. Somebody's well, paying true. for it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Somebody's paying for it. <laughs> Somebody's paying for it. But you know, hopefully, we would like to see organizations that are being. Um, supported by individuals. You know, if people had more of their own money, they could choose which organization they wanted to support. If they wanted to support the Pregnancy Resource Center, they could take their extra money that the government doesn't take away from them and donate to these great exactly. um, places. Yeah. So there's, anyway, um, yeah, you, so there's you know the deal. Much, I, how did we end up with 12 grades plus kindergarten in America? Well, we're not done. Hey, we got preschool on the on the um, platter coming up here. All day they can't wait. Well, how, they can't where did get, the twelve wait. come from? Because I went to school. I went to college. Both were a waste of time, largely. I've learned more on the internet, <laughs> disciplining myself and searching diligently than than any government socialistic program. How did we end up sending our kids to thirteen years of indoctrination? Why thirteen? That's a bad number. Yeah. Well, we have. Some heroes in education, John Dewey, and and oh. Um, uh, oh my goodness, I've the other guy's name who really implemented the twelve grades. But you know, it's interesting. There's a, a test of a, of an eighth grade graduation. So they used to, and I've been to an eighth grade school. There's one in in um, Missouri. It's amazing. It's your traditional 
little white schoolhouse, and it had grades one through eight, which is what they used to do. And then right. after eighth grade, we just got one more your, minute, Chris. Go ahead and tell us about. Oh, anyway, just finish that up, and then tell us about your show again. Yeah. Okay. So in eighth grade, then they went on to um, be, become an apprentice or to do their own learning on their own based on what their interests were and to actually learn a trade and right. and learn directly with somebody that way. And so we, we have really yeah messed up schooling thinking that we just sit in a desk and learn theory for, yeah. you know, six hours a day. But anyway, yes, join us on Wednesday mornings, 10 until noon. My co-host is Julene Jackson, and her son Frank just became the co-MVP last night at the McDonald's All-Star um, basketball tournament in Chicago, so we're kind of excited about Julene and, and her family, but she's my co-host, and uh, we'd love to have you listen in on Wednesdays. Wednesdays, 10 to noon, right yeah. here on KTalk AM 630. Thank you, Chris Kimball. Appreciate you coming Thanks. on. This is Ben McClintock, and this is the Thursday show of the Liberty Lineup, The Naked Truth, where we think right and wrong, not right and left. We are at am630k-talk.com. For more information about this topic, go to our Facebook page, The Liberty Lineup Radio Show, like and share. And after the break, we're going to be uh, talking to another candidate uh, from right here by our studios in West Jordan. Right back on The Liberty Lineup Radio Show. 